It was a dominating win for Gilas Pilipinas last night as they opened their SEA Games campaign with a 110 to 58 victory over Singapore. And here to join us to talk about the SEA Games campaign of Gilas is a Gilas mainstay, a Gilas living legend, <laughs> Gabe Norwood. Uh, good morning, Gabe. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning, neighbor. Good morning. We should have carpooled. I know, right? <laughs> Save some money on gas. <laughs> All right. So we're here to talk about Gilas. Obviously, last night we won by a whopping 52 points. We're very yes. dominant in this tournament. Um, I guess the question would be, how do we stay motivated? How do we take ourselves seriously in games like this? I, I mean, anytime you, you roll the ball out in, the, in your home court, I think that's motivation in, in itself. You know, especially for guys who are new faces to the team. You have, you know, Chris Ross, Vic Manuel out there for the first time representing the country. So I I have no doubt in those two that they're going to come out and just just play, you know, 100% all the time. But uh, I think Coach Tim did a really good job last night in terms of rotating players, keeping fresh bodies and fresh minds out there on the court. Uh, you mentioned uh, Coach Tim. Uh, if there's one person uh, who's taking this really seriously, yeah. it's Coach Tim Cole. He he had closed door practices. Yeah. He's not a. He doesn't look like someone. That, you know what? This is C games. We can just right. show up and you know, and then all these teams will just uh, you know give us give us the victories. Uh, what mindset do you bring into an assignment like this one? We know we're the strongest team yeah. in the field. So how do you? If you're coach team, what do you tell the players? I think it's it's one of those things. Just embrace the opportunity. You know, you have to come out and, and really, you know. Put your foot down. You know, you leave nothing to chance, nothing to doubt that that we are the most dominant team in the tournament, and to come out and prove it every single game, every possession, and, and break it down to the little details. I think, you know, Coach Tim has done a great job of, of proving that over his career, and, and how he's won games in the PBA, and and how he's also turning that over here with the with the national team. Well, speaking of Coach Tim, who's a new coach, we also do have a new set of players, right. kind of like a revamping of Villas Filipinas, so to speak. So, what do you think makes them different from the? Pre Previous years. I mean, I, I think it's a good mix. You know, naturally you have you have guys who are now eligible in terms of things and, and rules being different, being able to have, you know, Stanley and Chris and Christian um, all out there, Marcio and Matt, all in terms of the Phil Foreigners all being out there together on the same team, Greg included. But to have, you know, a guy like Vic, you know, that is, is really overcame so much in his career to have this chance. I think it's awesome to see, out, see him out there running around on the court. And, you know, you have so many just subplots, you know, Kiefer going for another gold in the SEA Games and L.A. back on the team and, and things like that. Jappet and Jumar, who I haven't even mentioned yet, have been the <laughs> two of the most dominant big guys in the league. So, you know, it's, it's a new look, but at the same time, it's familiar faces. I, I, I like that you brought up guys like uh, Chris Chris Ross, Stanley Priggle, and Christian Stadhardinger because of FIBA eligibility rules. Right. Um, in the SEA Games, they get to play. Right. Like Chris Ross in particular. Yeah. He's a good friend of yours. Uh, he gets to wear the Philippine uniform. I mean, how happy are you for, for someone like Chris? He's been waiting for this chance for so long. I mean, extremely happy. You know, just w within our circle of friends, you know, myself, uh, I've been able to represent the country how many times? Saul uh, Mercado has had a chance to play in the Jones Cup and play in FIBA events. And now Joe's on the coaching staff. I don't know about Joe DeVance being a coach. <laughs> that one, I am not he like... kind of uh, comfortable over I'm there. not like quite sure of that. I did, no one asked me if that was a good idea, so right. I don't know He wasn't taking that. notes or anything. He was just kind of watching the game. But, um, you know, it's just awesome to, to see, you know, somebody you're close to that you've grown with uh, in this whole process of, of making the move over uh, to the Philippines, really have an opportunity to represent his family and, and you know, his, his province and things like that. And when we talk about these new guys like Chris, I mean, last night he scored zero points, and yet he still made, like, the hugest impact. Yeah. Why that's, is that? That's Chris Ross. That's Exactly. You know, but at the same time, that's that's the national team. I think you, you walk into a situation where you what got you there is, is what you do best. You know, you, you're not asked to do these astronomical things. You know, you, you got guys who can put the ball in the basket. And, you know, we definitely did that last night, the way that Matt, Marcio, Stanley came out and shot the ball, and everybody just plays their role. So, you know, for Chris, he's able to just use his energy, use his defensive mindset, and really set the tone for the rest of the team. Uh, Gabe, you've been representing the country since 2007. That sounds like a really Sheesh. long time. What, 2007. Where was that? Next year. 2007. Don't, Don't answer that, please. Step <laughs> anyway, so is there a part of you that, you know, they're watching them last night. I still want to be there. I still want to, you know, wear that Gila's uniform. Or are you at that stage, you know what? 
you guys take care of this. I'm okay watching. I think I'm in, in the weird in between. You know what I mean? Uh, to to end my my kind of gearless experience so far on the kind of sour note, which was the World Cup, um, and to see all the fun that's being had right now, you naturally want to be out there, you know, being selfish. But at the same time, you know, I think the right group of guys are, are out there on the court representing the country in the Sea Games. And of course, since you're here, we do have to victimize you a little bit. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> do you have any plans of coaching like all these other Gilas players? Uh, I mean, it's always an option. You know, naturally, you want to be around the game and, and kind of use your experiences to help the next generation. But, you know, whether that's seriously coaching or simply coaching my three sons, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Hey, you, you, if, if Coach JDV is allowed to coach, <laughs> I think Gabe Norwood should, uh, should, should also. I'm just kidding. We got to have him on the, on the show. I love JDV. Oh, he's, he's a capamilia too, you know. Entertainment for sure. Okay, Gabe, what do you tell people who will say after, especially after watching last yeah. night, oh, sobra naman to, sobrang lakas naman nung team natin. You can make an argument, you can send Ateneo or Letran to the SEA Games and yeah. we can still win the gold medal. What do you, how do you respond to that? I mean, for now, you can't, like I was saying earlier, you can't take any chances, you know. There's been some things that didn't play out for, for the other countries. You know, you had Denzel Bowles and Lester Prosper who could have been potential they were already naturalized preparing. players. Yeah, already for, you know, yeah. that was at Indonesia. Yeah. And you never know the Tyler Lambs and, and the Moseses from, from Thailand and things like that. So you really can't take any chances not completely knowing your opponent and knowing what they're going to bring forth. So, you know, put your best foot forward and, and really prove it when you, when you step out on the court. And and speaking of strong opponents, I think Coach Tim mentioned last night that he's expecting Thailand to be to be that guy, to be that opponent yeah. opponent for us. Why do you think that is? I mean, um, just from my experiences and watching, you know, the the ABL and then the, the talent that they've been able to roll out, um, and, a, and a guy in Lamb that's been eager to, you know, really have this this kind of stage set for him. I, I think he's a big time player. Um, you know, his, his brother's there in the NBA, and I'm sure he wants to. to really Really create his own lane but you know for now they got to get there I, I think Gilas will will take care of business I think as is, as everybody expects but you really got to take the steps to get there first before you can really lock in on Thailand yeah I, I, when coach Ronnie Maxanok was, was here the other day and he was saying when he was talking about 3x basketball yeah. you can't underestimate the improvements that are being made right, right. in the ASEAN level mm -hmm. because of the ASEAN basketball league right and then you discover guys like Tyler Lamb exactly. who's an incredible talent Exactly. And you, you, you can't look at the Sea Games and say, oh, we'll always win it. Yeah. Yeah, you really can. I, like you said, we mentioned, uh, you know, off air, just mentioning Team USA and, and their approach to the Olympics and things like that. You know, everybody could say, oh, just send the, the NCAA Division One champs and, and send them out there to the Olympics and you can win it. But, you know, you can't take chances with the way that the world is developing and, and each region is developing. Um, what value does it bring? How important is it when the Philippine team plays at home and you make a crowd of 12,000, you send them home yeah. happy? There's nothing win. like it. There's nothing like it, you know, um, being blessed to have that opportunity many times in terms of the new FIBA format and then also hosting, you know, FIBA Asia in the past. Uh, it's the, one of the greatest feelings you'll have to, to look up there and see, you know, grown men in tears or seeing your kids jumping up and down. <laughs> and, and it's there's nothing like it. And I, I think there's something that all these guys will cherish for the for the rest of their lives. And speaking of the Filipino fans, I know they were cheering also for the Singapore yes. team last night. We found some sort of superstars in the Singaporean team so I'm glad uh, that's a No, they like this one player who uh, <laughs> I think reminded them of Bo Belga I think uh, <laughs> that's why they uh, they like them but you know but that's part of enjoying sports for sure and I think it's great when when you can cheer for your own team and you find a reason to you know yeah. cheer for the uh, for the other team for sure and I, I don't think it was in a in a mocking sense the the kid went out and played well uh, I think he was what only 19 yeah, 20 years young, old something really like young, that yeah. and, and that's probably a memory that he's gonna have for a long Long time and, and a, a definitely a good memory that he's going to have of, of being here in the country. So you know, more power to him and, and good luck. Good luck to him in his career. Gabe, your uh, your will. I, I can't believe it. I'm asking Gabe to give <laughs> share his wisdom and advice like he's 60 years old. <laughs> Gabe, what well, is back, your advice? Back in my day. Uh, yeah. No. No. <laughs> uh, your advice to the current Gilas team and they're out here on a mission trying to win a gold medal in the Sea Games. What do you want to say to them? Uh, my word of advice to the team: just really enjoy the opportunity, e embrace it. These are times that you know you'll, you'll never get to be teammates with these people again. You know, these are guys that you look up to. 
um, guys that you try to model your games after and things like that. So just enjoy it. Um, leave it all out there on the floor, and I, I think the country will, will will appreciate it no matter the outcome, even though we, we do kind of expect gold in this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, game. Maraming maraming salamat. I'll see you, I'll see you back home with our later. <laughs> but in the meantime, Kapamilya, when we get back, we'll talk to one of our most impressive athletes in the SEA Games. Agatha Wong will join us to talk about her journey in Wushu when the score returns. Oh, oh, oh.